Hi. I filmed a tea break video just the other night, but at the end, after filming the whole thing, I went back and checked the camera and saw that the SD card had filled up about three or four minutes into filming. So, sadly, I talked about uh, sort of everything I wanted to talk about. I talked about uh, creative process stuff, album updates, and now I'm refilming it, and I don't think I can really retrace my steps or talk about the same things uh, as though they are new thoughts, really. Um, it would feel kind of like uh, acting out, and I wouldn't really know what was reenacting my memory of the old video. Uh, Basically, I, I don't think I could really do it convincingly. Um, so for this week, I kind of have to dig a little bit deeper to find something to talk about. Um, and so I decided that I want to talk about what I think happens when you die. Which seems like... Uh, kind of heavy or silly, like so heavy it's silly kind of topic, but it's one I've been thinking about kind of recently because I realized that, uh, well, when I was younger, the thought of dying was always a very scary one. Um, and I was very agnostic in terms of my... Um, I didn't have a very strong conviction in any particular way that anything would happen and figured it would just be a, a big mystery and potentially a very awful one. Um, which made the thought of it a uh, source of a lot of fear, especially as I was a lot younger. And only kind of recently it occurred to me that I don't really have any of that fear anymore and I was wondering where it went. Uh, whether I just felt like I got older and didn't have the time for it, or uh, if I had become more certain in uh, my convictions, or had developed an idea that I was more convinced of and had made peace with. And I think I kind of have at least one that, uh, an idea that works for me, um, that I kind of arrived at unintentionally. Um, Basically, for the past year or so, a little more than that, I've been trying to think less about myself uh, as an individual um, for a number of reasons. I think it's conducive to very depressive thinking to think about I and me uh, all the time. I think of uh, my most depressing thoughts or thought patterns are ones that are very heavy in uh, constantly bringing things back to I or me. Um, and so I've been trying to shift my ways of thinking away from uh, constantly returning back to um, any individual uh, self. And I realized that that kind of reshaped what I think of about uh, dying and, and what happens when you die. And specifically, I mean, what happens to your consciousness when you die. Uh, the body, I think, is less of a mystery. It's kind of up to you. Um, but the idea of just like this individual consciousness that you have, well, what happens to it after the the energy that's making it run is uh, disconnected or depleted. I was always a daunting thought of just, well, where does it go? Um, and sort of the crux of where my thinking shifted, shifted away from the individual thing of thinking of consciousness 
in a individual sense and um i started recasting the idea of consciousness in its opposite in a more consciousness as a uh in a more universal sense and thinking about my own individual limitations in the negative rather than the positive uh that is to say um instead of thinking about my consciousness as uh well these senses give me the ability to feel these things and then i have some kind of uh processing function that um turns those impressions into something resembling executive function uh that's sort of a positive way of thinking about it thinking about uh what you have individually and i'm sort of flipping it into the negative which is that um all of these my specific individual consciousness is a uh negation of all the other uh all the other thoughts that are happening this is sort of coming taking as a first step the or taking as a foundation that um we are all uh of the same uh all of life is basically the same uh substance starting from that kind of monosubstantialist idea um and that uh life is this sort of automatic process of generating differences generating new things and uh sort of throwing them into each other to uh develop uh new complexities um but ultimately it all is the same uh complex thinking pr uh being that we're all a part of um that each of us individually only gets to see a little tiny piece of um you can kind of use a a uh, computer as a analogy there where a computer can run all these different programs uh the functions of which are not visible to one another but you can make these programs interact with and talk to each other to achieve uh a more complex end um but when a program it closes uh or ends its script that it never had a distinct processor outside of uh that was distinct from the rest of the world it was just uh something being executed by the same one computer that was uh executing all the other uh programs at the same time so taking this idea of uh consciousness as something universal shared by everybody but uh shown only in pieces to each uh each one of us uh all humans and animals and all all thinking uh this massive thinking dirt that all of us are um shown in different pieces that made me think about that consciousness that I was so worried about what would happen to after I died um it helped me think about that consciousness in the negative that is to say that it is what will be lost is not this uh my my senses and all my thoughts that come from my senses but rather what i lose in dying is all everything in the body that offered differentiation from the rest of the world basically all the specifics of stuff that i can see and feel and touch and memories as all of those erode away i'm not losing a positive thing but rather losing the negation of uh my access to uh the rest of um thinking that's happening in the world um basically I can see the idea as having a kinship with ideas of reincarnation but whereas at least the way I understand reincarnation to be uh 
well, I, I had a previous life as a bird or as another person, and now I'm living this life. In my understanding, there was no I to start with. It was just this massive uh, thinking, differentiating substance. And when we live a single life, we occupy uh, one little node of that. Um, the specifics of that node require you to not be connected uh, to all the other thinking in the world. Um, and so that may seem like a very uh, comforting idea, but then I think it is, but it also means that we're, um, how should I say this? I guess where some people might take that premise as an excuse for a retreat away from uh, the pressure to do anything or change anything, um, I think it actually doubles the imperative for life to be responsible to itself because if we really are all of the shared consciousness that once we lose our body and what differentiates us from the rest of the world, we're thrown back in the mix with, um, then we have to take the suffering of all of life a whole lot more seriously. I mean that in terms of uh, animals that have a, a differentiated, uh, the animals that can't access this, uh, have the same restrictions that we do with uh, slightly different specifics, um, to the whole system of life uh, that I think proliferates a lot of suffering to the majority of existence of most of the living. Um, becomes a lot more, uh, a, a much more pressing concern to us if we realize that um, the only thing that is keeping me from experiencing the pain of other beings that I can witness is my own fragile body that is trapping me essentially in one experience. And once that fragile, finite, uh, thing is lost, as it inevitably will be, uh, my differentiation from the suffering of other, uh, other living things is gone. Um, and so I think that there's also a, a daunting aspect of it too that uh, puts you back into this uh, um, a sense of responsibility. Um, a self-interested sense of responsibility in that you see all of uh, you see all of life and all of experience and everything being felt in the world as uh, one quick death away from being your own uh, experience and so it's a, a matter of uh, self-interest uh, that you would want to minimize the suffering of all uh, living things I don't think I explained that very well, but this video is already pretty late, so uh, I don't particularly mind. What else? Yeah, I think that I started this out by saying that it I didn't sit down and think, oh, I've got to solve the problem of uh, what happens after you die. Like, even just for myself, it wasn't a sit down and figure it out for my own sake or for discovery's sake. It was more just that this conclusion I was one I realized I believed as I was sort of shifting uh, or trying to shift away from thinking about my own individuality. Uh, sort of as a as a consequence of shifting my thinking in that direction my understanding of uh, death as a process has uh, um, 
sort of changed without my direct uh, interference uh, into uh, my own understanding of that idea. It does let you chill out about a lot of stuff, though. I mean, at the same time as I wanted to emphasize that it uh, reconnects you with your responsibility to all all of life, um, as it is your own life that you are caring for when you care for what we perceive as others. Um, something about the that shared project and sort of the inevit inevitability of it all uh, does, I think, give you some freedom not to uh, despair. Um, about just about anything. I think I've... Shifting my thinking in this way... Uh, definitely has made me worry about stuff a lot less. Um, and I think it was a very deliberate uh, it was a deliberate act to kind of try and shift myself in this direction just because I saw the um, I see a lot of our a lot of what we surround ourselves with to be incentivizing um, more individualist thinking, um, everything from social media to the degree to which you have to sell yourself on the job market constantly and, and market your, construct and market yourself uh, constantly um, as very uh, distressing. Um, that we're surrounded by these things that incentivize us to think in very in ways that distress us and depress us in uh, ways that become more unbearable over time. And so I wanted to orient myself away from that. That's about it. Um, I think the next video that I make will be in another three or so weeks, which will be towards the end of November, which is around when I am hoping to release this album. I realize I did say I would release it in the fall, and I learned later that uh, fall goes until, I think, t December 21st, or some kind of mid to late December date seems a little too permissive, makes it kind of hard to uh, force myself to call the project done and just release it, but by my next video I think I should be uh, able to give you some more details about it, if not uh, just release the whole thing then. So yeah, next time, next time you see me on this channel, it'll, it'll be about album time, I would say.